There are very few car brands capable of delivering emotion, but Alfa Romeo is one of them. This year, Alfa Romeo celebrated 110 years of a history of performance, speed, racing and competition. A milestone honoured with a special acronym. GTA or Gran Turismo Alagarita, Gran Chura Lightweight. That is the voice of the new Julia GTA. We couldn't wait to hear it live. And we wanted to share it with you before including you in the latest tests that the development mules are doing these days. Waiting for the defined version of this sports car to show what it can do on the road and on the track. We're in Pomigliano d'Arco in one of the plants where Alfa Romeo is preparing final tuning for the prototype cars. And here we can talk to the people who worked on the GTA project. Hi Domenico, let's see what's literally underneath this special car, how about that? We started with an excellent car and optimized it by working the micro aerodynamics, i.e. on the aerodynamic details. Specifically here, the air enters from the front, meets these aerodynamic fins which by creating turbulence, manage the vacuum in the front of the car, increasing the load on it. Looking there towards the rear of the car, the underneath of the car is basically fared. The exhaust systems are straight and therefore arrive straight towards the center. I took the liberty of completely redesigning the rear diffuser to achieve very good performance. Hold down your breath still, you jump the fire. Here, Domenico, I see a shape that's very recognizable to sports, car, and motorsport fans. Yes, it's the NACA duct, which is famous for having no aerodynamic drag problems and allows us to cool the electronic rear differential, which we'll expand on later. And subsequently, the air arrives at the rear and finds the new carbon diffuser, which together with the central exit of the exhausts, allows us a redesign that favors better aerodynamic efficiency. Obviously, we paid attention, as is done in racing cars, to all the airflow that passes under the car, which together with the aerodynamic accessories, allows us to manage the right balance of the car. Look at them now. All of the noise they make Counting the cards to one and then, Domenico, there is a characteristic of the project that's not yet been discussed this month, splitter adjustment. Yes, the splitter and spoiler adjustment, which allow our customers who want to bring the car on the track for the motor day to customize both the rear and front load. On the splitter, for example, by working on these three screws, it's possible to extract and modify its length and therefore change the load of the front of the car. Similarly, the scope of the car's spoiler can be changed to balance and load according to the shape of the track and the driver's driving style. If we've achieved these results, it's also thanks to the collaboration of Sauber Engineering. In absolute amounts, we've managed to obtain a downforce load value for the GTA that's one and a half greater than that of the Quadrifoglio, while for the GTA M, it's three times greater. And furthermore, when the aerodynamic profile is pulled out, it can only be used on the track, right? Right, when the splitter is pulled out, there will be writing that will remind the customer that this is for track use only. I'd like to tell you about a series of measurements that were made to reach the specific power of 186 horsepower per litre to the 540 horsepower 2.9 litre V6, such as the redesign of the connecting rods and pistons 
which are cooled by four oil jets instead of two, or the turbochargers that revolve at 200,000 RPM. Added to all of this is an evolution of the electronics that control the engine with the increase in performance without sacrifices such as deactivating three out of six cylinders in quiet driving conditions to limit consumption and emissions. In this test session, the GTA was also placed on the so-called elasto-kinematic bench for the suspension, which validates the unique angles of the wheels in relation to the simulations calculated by the designers. By applying with the machinery you see, longitudinal and lateral forces that reproduce driving on the road, it's verified that by moving the suspension in compression and extension, the variations in camber and toe are not affected by other elements, like the anti-roll bars or the connection bushings to the car body. This, in short, is the moment in which the reference dimensions of the setup get fixed, on which the steering response and, in general, the, the wonderful dynamic behavior of the Julia we already know, which has been further improved for the GTA and the GTA M with specific adjustments. But now follow me, let's enter together this very interesting laboratory that's here in Pomigliano, the electromagnetic anechoic chamber. In this chamber, two types of surveys are done. In the first scenario, sources that emit electromagnetic signals external to the car are reproduced to study how much the interior of the passenger compartment is shielded, thus isolating any disturbances to onboard devices as well as electronic control units and related wiring. In the other test, the car becomes the source of electromagnetism and checks are made to see if there may be interference that can disturb the surrounding environment to protect the car from being a source of electromagnetic pollution. New materials have been used on the GTA and Above all, on the GTA M, which interact in a different way with the electromagnetic fields compared to the standard Julia's, which is why specific measurements are made to analyze the behavior of the carbon fiber used for the aerodynamic elements of the bodywork, the polycarbonate of the rear window and of the side windows, and the protective roll cage mounted in place of the rear seat. These technical insights make you want to know more about how the work on aerodynamics and the engine affect the car moving on the road, the suspension, the brakes, the steering, and the electronics. But first, let's find out how the GTA is made, moving to the plant where it's built in Casino. The Julia GTA and the GTA M are limited editions produced in the same factory where the other versions of the Julia and Stelvio are also assembled, including the sporty Quadrifoglio. And the distinctiveness of both GTAs is obvious by the dedicated processes that have been designed for fulfillment. The bumper, in particular, arrives at the factory after being molded by a supplier that specializes in carbon fiber components. It's painted here in Casino in the colors specific to the GTA and is taken over by a team of specialized employees who are committed to its assembly before being sent to the department where it will be combined with the bodywork on the assembly line where their technicians will validate all of the specific parts developed and fine-tuned on the prototypes. The passage in the assembly line of the first advanced pre-production cars represents the moment of truth in the development of a new project. It's the moment when the parts of the car are put together for the first time and in which the manufacturability of a car is endured. The beauty of the Julia GTA is that it also adds the craftsmanship of the details. They are often made manually, and some of these are made by our prototype department. There is also craftsmanship about the operations, which were implemented during the production process. The 
GTA is a special car, not only for its technical characteristics or its performance, but also because it's built as a special car. This is the case with the single nut wheel, which is unique for a road-going sedan. Let Pierluigi tell us how many Newton meters of torque this torque wrench has. 850. 850. What is its distinctiveness? Well, the distinctiveness is this. Inside the nut, there are some grip cylinders that are chamfered to avoid damage in the production phase of the wheel socket. The socket wrench must be inserted with great care because it's very important that you can move to the top as the socket wrench is very long. The Giulia GTA and GTA M are the only road sedans in the world to be marketed with the single nut fixing system for the wheels. This is a typical solution of the higher performance supercar versions and confirms that this Giulia was conceived using a high performance sports car as a starting point. It was possible to do all of this by exploiting the versatility of a factory like the one in Casino, set up precisely to perform very different tasks at the same time. The GTA is a source of pride for us. It's the first time that a limited edition car with a high sporty profile has been produced in Casino. Part of the production of this car was a challenge because some assemblies were handcrafted, but we can say that it was a victory because from the early planning phases, we were able to involve our team leaders. The factory here in Casino has a lean production, especially in regards to assembly. We differ from the old hierarchies. The team leader, a skilled worker, is linked to the coordination of six other workers. In the case of the GTA, the team leader studied virtually every specific component of the car in detail and, together with the manufacturing, participated in the drafting of the assembly sites with the target of simplifying them as much as possible in order to insert this very special car into the factory line. This is where the production part of the GTA separates from the Giulia and Stelvio lines. The assembly phases of the special components of this version begin. As you can see on the GTA M, the rear doors are removed to give more freedom of movement during the assembly process of the dedicated housings. From the transmission tunnel to the unique bench with helmet storage for use during track days. The protective structure of the roll cage can be in different colours, combined with the colour of the internal finishes, as well as the six-point safety belts which arrive in the production line inside locked cabinets, which only the employees authorized to work in this department dedicated to the Giulia GTA can access. The rear spoiler is also fixed here at the end of the line by placing the central portion of the aerodynamic profile in position, which, as we've said, can be adjusted to several positions. All this takes place before the last step, that of quality control, carried out by workers dedicated to the Giulia GTA and GTA M. After talking about the technical developments that led to the description of the GTA project and seeing how it's built, it's time to find out how it performs on the road. Final versions of the GTA and GTA M will be available next year. Despite this, we asked the engineer Bagnasso to accompany him driving a prototype car on the roads around Turin, where technicians are making final prototype adjustments. So we've fawned over the GTA at a standstill, but now we're finally behind the wheel and we can observe how the car in motion performs after all the interventions we've seen. Having to make a car that was sporty, we continued to work on pure rear-wheel drive, which is historically an important element of Alfa Romeo. To live up to the GTA? That's right. We worked on the axle tracks, on the balance of the front and rear suspension, and of course on the calibration of the electronics. Comparable to skiing, we're carving on asphalt. We were able to get a lively feel, an immediate entry on the road, such that the wheels seem to engrave the asphalt. 
We worked on torque vectoring, the electronic differential, to maximize corner entry and exit speed. We obviously tuned the steering as well, and this combination of tyre and car allows us to achieve this carving effect. Look here, when cornering. The immediacy and precision of the steering gives you driving pleasure. The nannies widen, lessen their grip as you go from advanced to natural and dynamic. The latter representing precisely the Alfa Romeo spirit because it gives you the most freedom to set up the car. In race mode, the car has been further optimized to give the maximum on the track and allows the greatest performative exploitation of the car. We have two different souls. On the one hand, race mode for the track, and once the track day is over, we return home with a comfortable and easy to drive car. Well, we just needed this first taste on the road. And on the other hand, the GTA project was born taking inspiration from the history of this very important acronym for Alfa Romeo, which has always been linked to performance and driving emotion. Let's retrace the journey the designers made, a journey that led them to define this new Julia. Certainly, you've already learned about this car's technical side. Regarding style, however, we worked hand in hand with the technicians so that the style was in perfect symbiosis with the engineering. These slots you see are not purely aesthetic, but are useful for letting more air into the engine compartment. Even these metal grids offer the best air entry in terms of permeability. All these shapes you see are used to bring air to the intercooler, as well as aerodynamic airflow along the sides of the vehicle. This was done in conjunction with the Sauber team, which is dedicated to extreme cars. I'm talking about Formula One, where style has very little importance. The union between these two worlds has been a source of enrichment especially for us, but I think they too have learned something. We explained to them how necessary it is that in addition to the technical part that also the styling is consistent with the Alfa Romeo brand. About the back of the car, you see the 20-inch wheels with centre locking. We needed a specific track, about 30 millimetres wider for each part and within the wheels. We tried to do our best to make them as light as possible, knowing the car is rear-wheel drive. We didn't want to paint the carbon fibre fender. This was discussed at length. Sure, the car would have been aesthetically cleaner, but we didn't want to hide the material used, so we left it bare. We worked in upper and lower parts of the car's rear, redesigning it completely from the quadrifolio, so that the underside of the car can make the most of the aerodynamic flow. The rear wing has a very particular shape for two reasons, function and history. It recalls the historic Julia, if you remember, which has a shape higher on the haunches and lower in the centre, which doesn't have a stylistic purpose, but a technical one. With the wing, we needed to maximize downforce, especially in the middle of the car. We've repeated this shape here in the upper part of the car to give it a homogeneity with what is in the lower part of the car. What about the interior? How has the design enhanced the personality of the GTA? Let's start from the rear seat of the GTA M car. Our goal was to lighten the car, so we removed the rear seats and replaced them with a bench that has helmet hooks for when you go to the track. This element was made of Alcantara, a quality material that's lighter than leather and favours performance. In the central part of the bench there's a fire extinguisher which is obviously important when racing. The whole thing is branded with the GTAM logo, which has been embroidered at the top of the bench. And of course it's nice for the driver to see the car's badge through the rear view mirror. All the elements have also been removed from the rear doors because they're not needed due to the lack of rear passengers. We decided to use Alcantara because it's a material that doesn't create reflections and, as mentioned, it's much lighter than leather so as to let the driver experience the true essence of driving. Much of the work was done to the seat developed with our partner Sabelt. It envelops you with its carbon fibre shell and adjustability. The driver can also adjust the aerodynamics to use the car on the track. We decided to replace the door handle with this fabric pull, again giving the impression of a real race car to the driver.
As you've seen, a lot of work has been done to both the GTA and GTA M, knowing that these models will become collector's items for many customers. We spoke with Roberto Caronjo, the designer responsible for the colors and materials in the Atelier, where specific Alfa Romeo graphics were used for the helmet, suit, gloves and shoes that customers will get with their car. They were made in collaboration with our suppliers Bell and Alpine Star. Another element where the approach has changed compared to the past is in the treatment of carbon, like the mirrors for example, on which the composite fibre has an orientation that changes direction and was done by hand with great care to achieve this particular effect. In addition to the Alcantara and leather, the roll cage materials, the seat belts and the new Alfa Romeo logo, redesigned to be more gritty. Well, there's also the paint options. Particular processes were explored to make better use of light and to give greater depth to the colours compared to the three-layer colours, which are already typical of the Alfa Romeo brand. We did some experiments with liveries on the sides and on the hood, regardless of whether they would go into production, hoping to satisfy all those customers, particularly those linked to the history of the Bichon brand. We started from Pomigliano d'Arco, the native land of engineer Nicola Romeo, who gave the name to the Alpha brand, and we couldn't visit without touring Bichon House at the historical museum of Areza, because here is something very special that we wanted to reacquaint with the original Giulia GTA. The original GTA was limited to 500 examples, the necessary number for homologation. Its acronym contains its most important adjustment, the A is for allegorita, the Italian word for lightened. The body, in fact, was designed by Giugiaro for beton for the Giulia Sprint GT three years earlier. The panels are replaced with Perilumin 25, a light alloy that leads to a weight reduction of 200 kilograms. The 1.6 litre twin cam Alfa Romeo engine is equipped with a dual ignition head with 15 additional horsepower. This is a small increase, but it is the starting point for the development of other cars made by Autodelta, allowing the GTA to win in all categories for many years. The slogan was, a win every day with an everyday car. And this represents one of the fundamental concepts of Alfa Romeo during that period. The will to race and win with a car that was identical to the one that customers could buy themselves. A very particular shape, very Italian, which represented the perfect balance between shape and function. I mean that every line and, and every detail was born for a technical need too. Designed to make it stronger, but above all, to give a driving pleasure, typical of Alfa Romeo. Well, we've shown you the Giulia GTA taking shape, shown you the places where it's built and developed, and exploring where it was born, inspired by a story that continues to make enthusiasts' hearts beat faster. Consider it a sneak peek until we get to see the GTA on the road and on the circuit sometime soon.